Hey, this is Rob Ansbach, and welcome to another edition of eHeroes. Today I'm bringing on, I think, who is a, a very brilliant uh, person when it comes to taxes. Everybody likes taxes, right? You all guys, everybody likes paying their taxes. But I, I'm bringing on uh, John Panaris from, uh, was it, Ambridge, uh, PA, which is right above uh, Pittsburgh. And I've been following uh, John for, for oh, many years on, on Facebook, and and he tells it like it is. And uh, so, John, I'm, I'm glad you're here and, and uh, enlighten us with some stories. Well, I'm glad I'm here, too, because uh, I know we've been trying to hook this up for a while. But, uh, yeah, my, uh, my dad started this business in 1950, and people came up to him and said, what do we do with these W-2s? And uh, he researched it and, you know, started doing taxes and went started bringing people into the house and then they got into the kitchen after the living room and then my mother said go get a brick and mortar so we did and then 12 years later i bought this building that we're in and uh it's been history after that and wow. you know, people say do you, your dad would be very proud of you i said my dad could not do the taxes that we do today because things have changed so much oh yeah yeah it's so complicated now and, and uh you know, I'm glad there's programs out there that will assist us in our day-to-day -day things. But, you know, at the end of the year, you still need to have uh, specialized eyeballs looking at the numbers and saying, hey, yeah, you, you could save here. You could do this. You could do this. And I mean, why pay all that money to the government? Right, right. You know, I, I did a guy last year uh, from the state of Wisconsin, and he called me up and said, John, um, I got a problem. I said, what's your problem? He said, well, I have high cholesterol. I said, you need to go see a doctor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, although I play one on TV. But um, I said, you know, uh, if you get, if you do the right thing, I, I'll send you. I said, you got to give me the doctor's email address, and uh, I will email him a paper that I wrote about five years ago on how to, how to write off medical expenses. And guy said, I'm going to put a swimming pool in because swimming is the best exercise for cardiovascular exercise. I said, okay. I said, okay. So I emailed the doctor with some, with some directions and he sent me a file that was unbelievable. You know, I had to sign all kinds of HIPAA releases and everything else in order to get it, but I got it. I got everything that he had, had the diagnosis, the, the whole tests that he gave that makes sense to me but makes sense to the doctor and the insurance company and uh the guy put a swim swim point in the state of wisconsin where you only could like swim for two weeks because it's cold <laughs> but it was a, it was a tax write-off yeah forty thousand dollars worth of taxes wow wow you know and and you know i i, I was looking at our an rv my wife and i want to travel next year but I want to put it in the business name because okay. we're going to be seeing a lot of clients along the way. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, so I'm looking at this going, okay, uh, what's the best way? Because, you know, you can deduct cars and you can deduct real estate, but an RV is kind of one of those things that's, it's kind of a hybrid. And, uh, you know, so I don't, I don't want to get audited while I'm, I'm driving all around the United States. <laughs> oh, well, you know, there was a TV show like that along in the 70s i think it was where they went with an rv down across america and they stopped and they talked to people but you can do this from your rv yeah you know and, and you know I, I know i know a guy that does it on his boat yeah yeah so yeah you know yeah you have to get creative in these times because we're not all going to have a brick and mortar business we're all not all going to you know work out of our offices in our homes Right. And, and the IRS knows that, you know, we're, we're, right. we're, uh, as a people, we love to go out and, and socialize. We love to be able to meet our clients and, and some of us just don't want to fly. I know. And so we have to have that alternative method. So if we have our own R and B, I mean, that to me, that's, that's the best of both worlds. I know you can always park in a Walmart parking lot and, you know, they'll bring you coffee in the morning. Right. <laughs> But, you know, the, 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 just like you, though, um, you know, COVID kind of really wrecked the economy. 
you know, but more and more people are adapting to these technologies. And like you said, with your Wisconsin client, you're probably doing more and more, uh, you know, video conferencing, Zoom calls, Skype, you know, yes. more of that where people aren't coming into your brick and mortar. So, you know, how does the IRS transition that? Because, you know, now, now they're saying, well, you're not using your buildings as much as you used to. Yeah. Well, I know with, with the COVID, we stayed open because we were an essential business. So right. I even have a sign on the door that says the governor is not my boss. Although <laughs> we, we have to pay him money, but uh, he doesn't run my show. So hell with him. Everybody else closed out. And I thought, hey, this is great. So, um, you know, I'm not afraid of this virus that has a 99.6% recovery rate. So, you know, I don't wear a mask. And the only time I had to wear a mask was when I went grocery shopping and it said, you must wear a mask. So my mask says this mask is as useless as the governor because he hasn't been in his office for since February, I think. Anyhow. Um, yeah, I gotta show this to you because it's pretty cool. This mask this is useless. And, and, and for those uh, watching on video or listening on podcast uh, in Pennsylvania, our governor, which is Dictator Wolf, uh, I, and I use that word dictator loosely because uh, he has put pressure on a lot of businesses to not open, especially restaurants. And yep. um, you know, he's he's just hurting the economy. Um, and, and, and employees can't work and, and uh, businesses are failing. And, and uh, now we were just, uh, I guess a judge just, just ruled that all the mandates that the governor had put in place are, are uh, void. Yeah, I mean, go figure. I mean, after a while, I mean, you, you know, you gotta get ready for the cold and flu season. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, you know, we didn't have this during the, the uh, the anthrax virus and this virus and that virus and all of a sudden we had to wear masks now yeah i'm like you know i walked into a bank one time and i i had the mask on and i said give me money <laughs> out of my account <laughs> and the guy said if you weren't wearing a mask i'd have to call the cops <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's so dumb because now you walk into a, ma a bank and they're requesting you wear a mask right you want me to bring a gun too i mean it's just so dumb <laughs> exactly. You know, it's it never expected that it would be okay to wear a mask in a bank. Yeah, really. You know, but the, <laughs> I just I, I I find it ironic at the same point, uh, and 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 maybe you did too. But you know, through this whole thing, the government said, "Hey, let's push back your taxes to, yep. you know, uh, instead of paying in April, you pay in July." And I'm sure people still procrastinated and didn't get Well, they did. <laughs> yeah, the ones that always come early came early, and the ones that always waited until the last minute came the last minute. And, you know, we had nothing to do in between. So, I mean, we worked on stuff. Yeah. We were, we were expanding our business since my wife was, like, real energetic. I said, okay, we're going to take on some accounting clients, and I'm going to do business coaching. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I've been coaching people on their taxes. I see what they're bringing into us. Mm -hmm. I asked them questions. Is this expenditure really bringing you clients? And they'd say, no. I said, then what are you paying for it for? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Right. So, you know, we do things a lot different than other people who say, can I have your credit card number, please? Yeah. And hand you a return. We don't do that. We, we, we really like to get to know our clients. We know them so well that you know, we send them birthday cards, we send them emails, and we don't chase anybody. I mean, everybody says, well, how come your website's been down since 2015? I said, yeah, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> you know, it's coming up. It, you know, we have to do videos, but we've been like a little busy. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my server couldn't update the Windows 10, and we need Windows 10 to do our tax work. So I had to build a new server. Now I got, it's smaller than the old one. It's faster than the old one. And I have to do less work on it. So it's cool. I really like it. But it was expensive. And, you know, I'm like, eh, why didn't this happen during tax time when I have the money instead of non-tax time when we don't have the money? But that's how it is.
Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of, I think a lot of businesses are, are tempted. They, they're tempted to take out loans to buy equipment that they don't need. They think they need it, yeah. but they really don't need it. And then they, then they, they try to, to deduct it. And, um, you know, it, because it's not really a need, it's more of a want. Right. You know, then, the, then the IRS says, hey, what are you doing? You know, but the IRS will be glad to lend you the money or the, the government will be glad to lend you the money. <laughs> I, I, I just think this whole EIDL and this PPP thing is going to be a great mess when, when accounting uh, time comes around next year. Well, I just finished a paper about five pages of it on seven things you need to know about the EIDL, which is probably going to be a free report I'm going to give on my website once it goes up. Uh, I would never deal with it. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's a 30-year loan. Mm -hmm. You cannot change the name of your business. You can't change the, the, the function of your business. You can't, can't do anything without their, without their permission. Right. So, I mean, it's like, mother, may I? But, you know, I mean, if I went to the bank and got a car loan, they don't, they don't care what I do, right. you know, as long as I pay the pay the paid off. But if you get like a lawsuit and and you get money from that, they expect you to pay off the IDL before you do anything with it. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, can I eat first? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I looked at it. I, I saw some of my friends were doing it and I looked at them like, no, I am not being indebted to the government. No. I built my business. I have enough money. I have enough cash flow coming in that I don't need their money. Well, and, you know, and I refuse to do it, but I like what John Lennon said. If I want a swimming pool, I just write another song. <laughs> you know? so that's well, a weird one. For me, it's write another book. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I like it. I just ordered your uh, Morons book. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the, the new one just came out, Rob versus Humanity, and that one's pretty funny, too. Oh, okay. I can't wait to get that one, either. You know, but uh, yeah. I'll have to mail it to you. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, everybody says, well, you're a Trump man. I said, no, 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 no. Listen, here, here's what I got to tell you. I got to tell you, anybody that gives us money and decreases our taxes and changes things so it makes it easier, I'm in favor of it. You know, because somebody asked me, what was the best tax year? I said, 1975. I said, why 1975? They said, you can remember that? I said, I can go back to 1947. But, you know, in, in 1975, we had the gas crisis, gas was $6 a gallon, incomes were up and down, up and down, up and down, the internal revenue said, we'll do income averaging. We'll average five years of your income, and then we'll tax you on the average of that income. That worked great. It put a lot of money back in people's pockets, and the IRS said, whoa, we gave them way too much money. We got to kill that. Yeah. So... I mean, it started out as a good idea, but then, you know, you knew when people were out of work for a year, <laughs> that becomes going to drop. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we, you know, we, we like to look at, we, we do a lot of problem cases. I had a guy call me up one time, and he said, John, there's somebody here who wants to talk to you. And I said, who's that? He said, it's the Internal Revenue. <laughs> He said, I didn't know they really came to your house. And I said, well, if you don't file your taxes for a long time, they will. They come with eight people. He said, I'm only seeing one. I said, ah, there's seven others outside. He said, what do you mean? I said, two in the front, two in the back, two on each side. In case you go out a window or a door. Anyway, uh, you know, we, we did 10 years of his work and uh, saved him $7.2 million. And he thought he was going to have to file bankruptcy. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I know a lot of friends who, uh, you know, they rack up a, a, a huge medical bill. Oh, yeah. And, you know, one of the things here in Pennsylvania is they can't come after you for medical bills. So what they do, they circumvent that law and they send those medical bills to collection companies, which then can come after you. Right. And, and uh, the collection companies will hound you and hound you and hound you. And, <laughs> you know. What, what, what's really bad is because we have a huge identity theft uh, thing going on right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody's inter information is on the internet. Uh, the IRS will send you notices saying, hey, you owe taxes on this debt that you don't even owe. 
but the IRS thinks you owe it because the credit card company has reported you as owing it. And then you try to fight the credit card company saying, hey, my identity was stolen. What do you want me to do? The yeah. IRS doesn't care. They just want the money. They just want the money. Exactly. You know, and, and same thing with, with, with these medical bills that you don't pay, you know, <laughs> it's like, this is crazy. But well, you know, how do you fight the IRS? Well, it's a long process, but we fight them all the time. And that's what we do. Um, I, I haven't been on an audit for, I'd say a good seven years. Wow. I mean, um, because, you know, they, I don't know if they see our name on it and they say, well, this guy, you know, is okay. Um, I'm not sure, but, um, we have, uh, you know, we, we go to great lengths to make sure that people don't get audited and we don't embellish anything. I mean, it, there's no sense to it because if you do get caught in an audit and you have to prove it, you can't prove it. So, you know, it's like telling a lie. You have to remember that lie all the time. And if you tell the truth, you never get caught in a lie. Well, you had mentioned something, I think, on your Facebook about the celebrities underreporting yeah uh, or or not factually reporting how much they actually make right and, um you know what are the circumstances there i mean what yeah. happens to them well you know one one gal just got caught i just put that on my facebook page um trying to remember it was one of the kardashians who had a makeup line mm. and she over reported her income so she could be a billionaire status wow and she sold it to cody and cody reported the real deal and the IRS saw that and said, okay, you lied. <laughs> so, you know, damned if you do it, damned if you don't, I guess. <laughs> Why would you over-report? You're going to have to pay all that taxes. Because she wanted to be on Forbes magazine as a billionaire. That's just dumb. You know, and then you have, and then, you know, let's talk about Trump. And, I, and you know, some of us are Trump fans. Some of us aren't. I, I get that. Uh, yeah. And some of you, you know, some of the listeners want Trump to release his tax records and some don't. I, I personally don't care. I think it's none of their businesses. I, I think Trump is in the right. You know, and then here's the thing is that there is nothing in the law books that says a president to be has to release or a president has to release their tax returns to anybody. That and was just something that started, I think, what, in the seventies. Yeah. In the seventies. And, uh, uh, to me, I, I think that anybody who shares their tax returns outside of the IRS or their accountant or their trustworthy people uh, is is uh, asking for it. Yeah, they are asking for it. <laughs> you know, because who's going to, not everybody is going to redact your personal information and, right. and you know, your social security is going to be out there, Your uh, how much money you make or your investments or anything else. It, it, it's going to become public knowledge and you don't want that. Nobody well, wants that. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, this is the first year we have a tax attorney who's in charge of the IRS. We had bureaucrats in there before. Now we've got a tax attorney. So consequently, he's going after everybody that when, you know, the mandated law was you had to provide insurance for people that didn't have insurance whether you had it or not uh, but you had to pay this fine if you if you didn't do, you didn't do this or this or this so uh now we have a tax attorney going after all those people back in 2016 and i'm one of them because he you know i have to go back and pay that 695 dollars because <laughs> you know he paid for people who didn't have insurance even though i didn't have insurance but i'm finally on uh I'm over 65 now, so I get I get insurance now. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, what I see coming on with what I've been seeing because I've been doing taxes for over 50 years is I, I really believe Trump wants to wipe out the Internal Revenue Service. I mean, just wipe it out. I mean, he wants to win. Let's wipe it out. You know, let's everybody keep your money. <laughs> um, I mean, it would be simpler. It would be simpler for everybody. I mean, granted, uh, by doing so, we're going to wipe out a lot of the. Um, I think what we, you know, the the the, the social security, the the everything else that that we've grown accustomed to. But right, I and I yeah. do think the government is overbloated. 
Uh, oh, yeah, I think a lot of programs could be eliminated and, and that would help save our save on taxes. But I, I think that um, um, you know, what he's doing right now to boost the economy is probably one of the best things that uh, any president has ever done. I know. Um, you know, people are going to disagree with me. I know. Uh, and that's okay. I'll get hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing is that, you know, when you have someone in charge of our government that doesn't uh, see how entrepreneurs actually operate, it's, it's always about their greed. You know, exactly. how much more can we tax you? And, and um, you know, then you're just beating down the, the, the people that are trying to push up the economy. Exactly. Exactly. I but, mean, you know, all, all we can hope is we get to continue this a little longer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping, you know. I, I, well, they're going to tax everybody at 80%, which I think is ludicrous. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if we're a European country, I get it. You I mean 50% or 60% of their income goes back to the, to the economy. And, and, uh, but they're getting free health care. They're getting this. They're getting that. Problem is, their free health care isn't free, really, because you're you're waiting, you know, months to get in line to go, you know, get your teeth checked. That's right. Yeah, I know a lot of Canadians who've died waiting for their surgeon in the in the on a gurney in a hallway. Yeah. And that that that's that's terrible. Yeah. Or you have to catch a plane to go a hundred miles to go see a doctor. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you know what. What are some of the, the new things on the horizon that the that you know you have to look at as an accountant, uh, uh, you know, for the you know for for businesses to 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 consider? Well, you know, nothing's really changed in that in that regard. But uh, there's going to be in November. I usually sit down with a lot of clients who come to me and say, "Okay, what's changing now?" Because now after after. In the, in the late fall, before Christmas, before Congress and, and the Senate go on vacation for Christmas, they, they start making changes to the tax laws. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really have to sharpen my brain up a little bit and say, what are they doing now? Where are they going with this? And then I have to sit down and figure out what they try to figure out where it's going to lead people. Because every time they do something, it's a domino effect. And when it gets to the point of where it makes you crazy. You have to sit down and you have to say, wait a minute, let's, let's look at this logically. Mm -hmm. So I, that, I think they, they did simplify a little bit of it. Uh, this, this go around um, by, um, you know, raising the, the, uh, the, uh, what was it? The one deduction where it used to be that you'd have to itemize your house and this and that and everything else. And they raised the limit to the point where you don't, have yeah, to you don't need to do that anymore. anymore. Yeah. You just have to report it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, uh, I know that they are trying to simplify the tax code, whether they're ever going to make it so simple. I don't think so. I, I don't know. Somebody I, will I, muck it up. <laughs> it gets mucked up every year. Uh, you know, it, it's, but, <clears throat> you know, I, do, you know, what are, what are the average, I mean, the, the, the people that come to you, are they all business owners? Are they, are they uh, individuals? Well, mostly mostly individuals. We have some businesses. We have some corporate re uh, people. We have a lot of people who are, are waiting to see. I, I announced one time that I may do a price drop because I used to be the most expensive guy on the block. I used to start out the cheapest and then got everybody. And then I became, you know, People kept saying, raise your prices, raise your prices. So I did to the point where I started losing clients. Mm -hmm. And then I had a, a gal who worked for me once and she took my client list unbeknownst to me and ran to a competitor because she was stealing from me. Wow. So I, I'm like, bye. People say, Can, will you take me back? I said, sure, but I'm going to charge you double. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that's how I used to be. I mean, uh, those who know me know that in a, in a prior life, I had a, a cleaning business and, and, uh, you know, I first started out, my slogan was, we clean your carpet, not your wallet. And I wanted right. people to know that I was the cheapest around. Problem is, is that when you advertise cheap, all you're going to get is cheap. And so all my clients didn't have any money. They had the, the, the worst carpets in the world. Uh, yeah. I would spend, you know, 10 times longer cleaning these. I, I should have just set them on fire because it would have been easier. 
I have one of those carpets right now. <laughs> and uh, 45 so, years old. When I raised my prices, uh, all those cheap clients went away. And yep. uh, I got better clients and built the business to where I wanted it. And, you know, many, many, many years later, I sold the business and started this one. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, um, you know, I, I tell everybody, you know, one of the things you really have to do as an entrepreneur is raise those prices. Yeah. You know, you experience that as well. And, and, but you get to a point where you want to have stability. You want to have right. clients keep coming back, uh, but you want to, you know, continue to grow. And, and so you found yeah. the pain point and uh, it, it got to the point where you charged too much and you were losing clients. Right. Exactly. So now, you know, we, we lowered our, our notary prices, even though the consumer index said I can charge this much. I don't, my wife says, John, it's the pandemic. I said, yeah, 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 okay. All right, so we'll bring them down a little bit. So, you know, she puts signs up in the windows and says, you know, come check our new lower prices. And I'm like, okay. Well, you know, everybody says, well, what do you charge? And I said, depends on your circumstances. And it depends on what we do for you. It depends on, you know, whether I'm going to study for 50 years and just give it to you. I don't think so. So. You know, if if you, if there's a way to do things differently, would you do them? And they said yes. I said okay. So we'll sit down and we'll have a talk. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and I, I I always tell I people, tell people to take the bridge. <laughs> I always tell people stop saying you have affordable prices because affordable is, you know, one person might think it's affordable. One thing one person might think it's too pricey. Exactly. It, it's it's so uh, you know make your prices. Fair enough that you can continue to grow your business and 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 uh, attractive that uh, that the people are going to come in. But I, I would charge for consultations, uh, and yep. I, I and the reason I say that, and I tell everybody this, is that whether you're a lawyer, uh, a professional of some sort, a uh, consultant, you know, what you're doing when you're charging for that consultation is you're telling people, hey, this is my experience, and I'm backing it up with. You have to pay for that experience. If we go further. I'll be glad to deduct that consultation off the service, but you got to, you got to put some skin in the game. Right. Exactly. You know, somebody told me a sale isn't a sale till money changes hands and we're not a library. You know, we're, we're not Andrew Carnegie's birthright child. So <laughs> we, do, we do, you know, we, we do things. I, I don't really like to charge because I like to show off. Yeah. Uh, you know, be honest with you. Uh, my wife is charging for consultations, so I said good. So I said you have to you have to change you have to change the way you're doing things. So I said good. Yeah, because it, you know what I've I've experienced is this: people will come to me, and I'll give them something for free. Yeah. And then they'll go to the competitor to get the the, the cheapest price possible. I know. I'm like, dude, no, uh, uh-uh. it's not happening anymore. My dad used to say, "If you qualify, <laughs> if you qualify, yeah. if you qualify." <laughs> you know, and attorneys do that all the time. Yeah, you know, and 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 uh, so when when you have a popular business and people are gravitating towards you, you can't spend all your day, you know, doing free consultations or, right. or offering, you know, free online whatever. You have to charge for all that time. Yep, up this region. I just wanted to show you. I have a copy of the actual 1913 1040 that Woodrow Wilson designed the Internal Revenue Service and the Federal Reserve Bank. And right after that, he said, I just ruined my, my country. And you, can find <laughs> that, you can find that on Clipsmith. But this, I don't know if you could, if I can show you this. That is the original flat tax. Wow. 1% of 20,000 to 50,000. So I Googled, I said, what was the mean average income of blue collar workers in 1913? And they said $6,000. So there were a lot of people that didn't pay taxes back then. But who were they going after? 6% of 500,000 or more? They were going after the rich. Yeah. So, yeah. So when people say, oh, they're, they have too much money. No, the government steals it, you know, and they do whatever they want with it. You know, I don't get it. Yeah, no. yeah. And, and for every entrepreneur, it, the, the whole thing is, is we don't want to pay a lot of money for our taxes. 
So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, you know, deduct whatever we can legally. Yep. And I say legally because I know that there's a bunch of people out there that'll deduct whatever they can. Sure. Uh, you know, or they'll try. Or they'll try. But you know, they're, 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 what what people don't understand is that the government has algorithms just like Google. Exactly. And, and they can tell, you know, you know, based on on formulas, I that you know uh, that you know you could be flagged or you could be flagged or you know they know uh, exactly. So why take the chance? Just be honest with your taxes. Well, you know, I mean, you send them your financial records your whole life, and all of a sudden they have a track record on you. So when you jump out of line, bam, yeah. they come after you. They send you a letter. We have a we have a client in Ohio who. Uh, her husband died, and she uh, she had to sell all the properties to pay off all the taxes and the mortgages and everything else, and she couldn't pay them all because some of the things were really high, and so she had a cancellation of debt, and it came out to about one hundred thirty thousand dollars. So we sent the paperwork in, you know, that she qualifies because it would create a hardship for her, and. They sent her a bill for 130000 She wow. said, what do we do? I said, well, they changed your algorithm. So now we have to redo this and send a different form in to get them to pay attention to you. She goes, why didn't they tell us that? I said, well, you know, I was on a phone with a tax uh, advocate, and I was just mentioning this case to her, and she said, well, you don't do that anymore. I said, what do you mean you don't do that anymore? Teach me. So she did. And I said, okay, we have to do things differently. But the, the funniest part was when on a cancellation of debt, we had somebody come in who works for a a coastal employee, a coastal business. And well, I'll just tell you, she's a blockhead. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, she couldn't do this, so she came to us. And I thought this is the this is why they charge so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, uh, no, I, I the tax game has been, you know, as long as you stay on top of things, you're okay. Yeah. Now, people people used to come to me. I said, I want to write this off. I want to write that off. I want to write everything off. Well, you don't want to write everything off, you know, because then they're going to ask you, how do you eat? That's right. You know, and and they really want to know. Yeah, and, so, and uh, I, I think that you can only take losses for so many years before they come out to you and say, "Hey, why are you still running this business?" <laughs> it's not a, a business; it's a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a hobby. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's good to show income, and, and oh, yeah. you can't deduct <laughs> more than you make because then they'll say, well, "What's going on here?" You did. Two million dollars in sales, and and you made five dollars this year. Come on, exactly. How, how do people how do people find you? Where do they go? Uh, well, you know, they can wait till you put your website up. But. Yeah, they can wait till the website up. And we get a lot of referrals from our clients because our we do such a great job with our clients that they they've been with us for 50, 50 years. Wow. Uh, Forty years, and you know they come in and they say, "Well, we don't have to file anymore because we're retired now." And I'm saying, "Okay, now we need new clients." That's so, right. Um, you know, I'm, I may do some advertising. I don't know what kind of advertising I did. I've been on the radio for thirty years, and you know, we had be really any more clients than than normal. So I have to do something else. So yeah, maybe it'll get the website up. Yeah. Well, they can find you on Facebook, right? Yeah, they find me on Facebook, and uh, I've got like twenty-eight, over twenty-eight hundred people on my Facebook page. So oh, that's too many. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I can't, I can't keep track of everybody. You know, when they send you birthday things, you know, you gotta got a lot of people to say happy birthday to. And I, I also noticed that you have a Google My Business listing, so they can go to Google and type in. Uh, what John Panaris agency and right. and they'll find you and, yeah. and um, you know for all those people that uh, also have Google My Business listings, make sure they're updated. Make sure that yeah. the information that you supply in Google with is is has the information that you want them. You know the hours. Uh, you can even post 
pictures and updates just like you do on Facebook. Right. Yeah. I, and you know what, what else we do that I did this as a fluke one day. I went on Pennsylvania uh, claim. Oh, what the hell is it called? Anyhow, we, where you have money that you don't even know. Oh, no, the unclaimed thing. The unclaimed monies. And yeah. we type it in and look for them and they go, oh, hey, do you have a, do you have a brother over here? Oh, here's Serenity. Serenity finally finished with a client. I did, yes. Oh, You're there's, sitting on a new client. Yeah, Serenity just joined and, and, uh, and, and we're about ready to wrap up. Too. So Hello. <laughs> everybody say hi to Serenity. And, and uh, Hello. so when you stop in or call uh, the Panaris agency, you'll, you'll get John or you get Serenity and, and uh, they'll help you with all your tax information. They'll, they'll keep you straight. They'll keep you ethical. And, and uh, that's, that's what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, we try. So thank you guys for joining us. And, and I know it's, it's only like two seconds for Serenity, but you know, people, when they come to you, they're going to get serenity probably more than they will John. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, John's like me. We're very sarcastic and, and yeah. uh, we rub people the wrong way sometimes, but we're always oh, going to be that, that boy scout and, and uh, treat you right. Yeah. So. Hey, I, I like the fact that you talk during this. Me. Usually you ask a question and the, your guests ramble on, but I know, I, you know, I, I, like I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask questions. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for joining us. And, and uh, for all the listeners, we'll see you on the next one. See ya. Right. Thank you.